first work to a spot where you need to turn the work to make a short row. And there's one thing that we need to keep in mind. If you follow a pattern that is written for German short rows, then follow the pattern instructions and stop whenever the pattern tells you to stop. But if you use German short rows instead of wrap and turn or shadow wraps, then uh, follow the pattern instructions. Let's say in my case, the pattern would tell me to knit to the last four stitches of the row, right? And then work one more stitch. I give more details about why it happens in the written tutorial. You will find it at tenrosaday.com slash german dash short dash rows. So once you arrive at this spot, turn your work. Simply turn your work without doing anything with these stitches, without any wraps or anything else. So turn your work. And there are just three steps that we need to do. And these steps are the same no matter what stitch pattern you're using or whether you're working on the right side of the work or the wrong side of the work. So just three steps all the time, anytime you need to make a short row. So the first step is bring the yarn to the front of the work. Because I've been knitting on that side and now I'm looking at my purl side, the yarn is already at the front of the work. But if you're working in a different stitch pattern and somehow the yarn is at the back, First, bring it to the front of the work. Then slip this stitch from the left needle to the right needle. And we do it pro-wise. So we insert the tip of the right needle from right to left and slip the stitch from the left needle to the right needle. And now we're going to do something interesting. We're going to take the working yarn and pull it up. Pull it up so that the bottom of the stitch is at the top of the needle. And when you look at the needle like this, you should see that half of the circumference of the needle is covered by the stitch and the other half is covered by the bottom, by the stretched bottom of the stitch that looks like two strands. So we do it to make sure that this stitch is not too loose after we work it and then uh, the transition between the short rows is actually invisible, well, almost invisible, right? And now once we do that, we simply resume working in pattern. If the next stitch is a knit stitch, then you bring the yarn over the needle and to the back of the work and knit that stitch. If the next stitch is a purl stitch, as is the case here, you bring the yarn over the needle and to the front of the work like this and then continue working in the pattern until you need to make a next turn. When the time comes, remember to make an extra stitch if you use German short rows instead of wrap and turn or shadow wraps. And then again, simply turn the work and repeat the same three steps. So first we bring the yarn to the front of the work then we slip the stitch and then we take the yarn and pull it up, stretching the bottom of the stitch like this. And then work in pattern. When we come to these double stitches, you see they are different. They look very different and they are hard to miss. So this is uh, because there are a lot of strands there. But even though there are quite a few strands here, we still treat the stitch as one stitch. So when we get to the stitch, we work it as one stitch. So we knit it like this, or we purl it like this. And that's all there is to it. So when we work German short rows um, in every row, then we'll get a look like this. I blocked this swatch because obviously there would be shaping and I wanted to make it flatter so you could see how the fabric looks. And as you see, you can tell that something is going on here, right? You can tell there is a shaping, but it doesn't show in the fabric. The stitches are more or less the same and uh, the right side of the work looks very nice. When we turn the work, and look at the wrong side of the work, there's a different story. We can clearly see those short rows, but it's the wrong side of the work, right? The right side is nice and neat. 
The only case when we should stick to the classic wrap and turn or shadow wrap techniques is when uh, several consecutive short rows have the same turning point. It sometimes happens when we shape a heel of a sock and we have to wrap the same stitch twice. In a situation like this, German short rows will form a small but noticeable hole. In all other cases, it is a perfect way to work short rows in any stitch pattern. To read this tutorial as a set of step-by-step -step photo instructions, go to tenrosaday.com slash german short rows. To download it as a PDF, join the club at tenrosaday.com slash club. Thank you for watching this video and have a wonderful week. I'll see you in the next tutorial.